Okay, in this episode I want to talk about three common web architectures that we use to build apps today. Now, every web app exhibits some kind of style. This is not the standard, this is just the style, the, the way that we build applications. And that's informed by lots of different things. So we have lots of inputs. First of all, our training. So when we design and implement, whether we're object-oriented programmers, have spent most of our time doing user interfaces or back-end systems or middleware, that affects the style that we bring to the application. It's also affected by our tools. If we're using mostly command line tools, our style and the way we would build applications is probably going to be different than if we were using Eclipse or some other editing environment. Also our experience, the kinds of things that we've done over time, the things that we know work. We tend to repeat the things that we know we can be successful with. Then of course the biggest influence is our problem domain. For example, if I'm creating an instant message application, that I'm going to have a very different style than if I'm just doing an, a document editing system. So these all uh, help inform our style. And of course, there's an infinite number of styles because there's an infinite number of developers and designers. But we're going to focus on three today I'm going to name. The first one is the tunneling style, the object style, and the hypermedia style. You've probably heard these words before, and hopefully this will, this will all make sense. So tunneling is usually associated with SOAP. SOAP is probably the best example of this tunneling sort of style. In the tunneling style, the interface that we share is at the component level. We build components and then we expose those components to the public internet. We publish secure endpoints, so every component has its own URL, and we send messages back and forth to that location to get things done. We provide a service discovery document or something that explains what's in that component and what's available at that URI. So uh, in SOAP, that's commonly WSDL, but even if you're not using SOAP, if you use this component style, you'll have some kind of interface document. Client code then binds to the functions and arguments described in that discovery document. So we actually, in the case of SOAP, we have some very powerful tools that let us turn these WSDL documents directly into code, and we just simply bind that code, and when we use that code as our connector component. So the, the SOAP style is very, the tunneling style is very powerful, very common, and uh, there are lots of examples of that. Now another one that's become very, very popular in the last few years is the object style, sometimes referred to as the CRUD or read, uh, create, read, update, delete style. In the object style, we actually interface not at the component, but the actual object, customer, user, warehouse, product, so on and so forth. We publish a, and secure a predefined URI space. In other words, we have a list of URIs that are associated with those objects, or maybe URI construction rules, and that's what we focus on. Not a single endpoint, but a URI space. We then provide readable uh, documents, such as lists of URIs, objects that are associated with those URIs, and protocol methods, such as post, get, put, and delete, that are associated with each of those objects and each of those URIs. Client code is then bound to the URIs, objects, and methods from the documentation. We don't have a lot of build tools for this, so what happens is we actually hard code the URIs or the construction rules, associate the user object or the customer object with that URI, and code in the methods that we need. As I say, this object style has become very, very popular right now, primarily because it, it normally gets implemented with JSON, but it could be implemented with other formats as well. The third style I want to talk about is hypermedia style. It's usually commonly uh, associated with REST. The hypermedia style, we don't interface at the component or the object. We actually interface at the message, the message that uh, people share. I don't really need to know details of your object model. I just need to know the message you're going to send me. We publish and secure a sort of a varying URI space. It's not a guaranteed list of solid URIs. There are a few starter places, but those URIs could change over time. So we provide two kinds of documentation. A message documentation, usually in the form of a media type, such as Atom, XHTML, HAL, Collection JSON, Voice XML, and usually a domain dictionary, a list of the data points and possible actions. And sometimes this domain dictionary is in machine-readable form. Client code actually binds to the message that gets sent back and forth. It knows how to find links and forms inside those messages, and that's what actually drives the application forward. It's not that the client knows what a customer is, it knows what a form that gets me a customer is. So we've talked about this hypermedia style, which binds to messages. We've talked about this object style, which actually binds to the objects in the domain. And we've talked about the tunneling style, which actually binds to the components that hold the objects in the domain. And like I say, every app exhibits a style. What styles do your applications exhibit and how do those fit with your use cases? And we'll talk more about this in another episode.